Next Day Under 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah, yes, List Day. And today's a very special edition of List Day because we are doing a special edition of the biggest video on my channel, the top 10 hardest monsters to summon in Yu-Gi-Oh! that just aren't worth it. I figured now that I got the whole new setup and I've done a couple of videos recently where I'm doing remakes of some of my biggest videos to kind of update them for a modern era, I figured now is probably the time to update my biggest video. And to celebrate this monumentous occasion, I'm also going to be announcing something very special for you for this special edition. I am announcing my second channel, Enemy Controller! Here you'll be able to go and watch me, Ryan, and maybe some other special guests just hang out and play some fun video games, not necessarily Yu-Gi-Oh! content. That is where you can go hang out and play along with us. The Let's Plays over on Enemy Controller will definitely not duck into any of my list making time or anything for this channel, so do not worry, you will you will not see any less videos on this channel. If it takes me two weeks to make a video, it's because it took me two weeks, not because that's killing any time. No worry there. But yes, today we're going to be looking at the top 10 hardest monsters to summon Yu-Gi-Oh that just aren't worth it. However, I decided that on this version of the list, as to not make the other one completely obsolete, we would look at some more modern cards and try to not rag on the older cards just so much unless they really really deserve it. So this time around I hope there's some interesting entries on here not just the obvious ones. And finally like the old list we will have a short description of each card as to why it is a big pain in the butt to make and why the effect is just not worth all of that pain in the butt and we'll have a replay of us summoning that card just so you can guys can see the the absolute loopholes you need to go through and the unrealistic board states you need to create in order to get them on board. But without further ado number 10. Number 10, and incidentally the newest card on the list, the Arrival Cybers Adagnister. This Dark Link 6 Cybers monster has the following effect. Three plus monsters with different attributes. Now, it really doesn't matter what the hell this thing does at this point, just the fact that it's a Link 6 should give you some indication just how difficult it is in order to make a card like this. One must consider the fact that it's a Link 6, which means it took at least from you know, from some card advantage level, six monsters to make it. That's ridiculous. The original attack of this card becomes 1,000 times the number of Link monsters used to make it. In order to get that big number, you need to make it with Link monsters. Unless you're using a bunch of weird Link ones, that means you are potentially using more than six monster resources because you want to get, like, you know, a couple of Link twos and threes and sh crap shoved into this thing so that it gets a nice big chunk of an attack power. Unaffected by other card effects. It honestly better be. Once per turn, you can target one other monster in the field, destroy it, and then summon a token. It's a Link 6, requires some ridiculous wombo combo in order for you to make it, and the best thing you get is Untouchable Towers Big Number that has a ignition targeted destruction effect. whoop de freaking do. They couldn't even make it a spell speed 2. But anyway, let's get this thing on board. Alright, the first replay comes courteous of Observador Polygonal Dave's Spanish-speaking fan. I got the fast animations on, so for those of at home that can't follow, I do apologize, but uh, otherwise this video would be three hours long. Safe to say, it's a bunch of Cyber's Link shenanigans. Oh yeah, this is uh this is a wombo combo if I've ever seen one. It does seem though that he's searching most of what he needs, so it's probably at least a moderately consistent combo, not the most thing that's consistent in the world, but it's at least it's at least doable. However, you can see that the board he ends up making isn't particularly fantastic. He went super minus just to make this silly thing, and it's just sitting on board not doing anything. Uh, it's a damn good thing that the player he's playing against is playing, uh, I don't know, what is this, Artifact Turbo, <laughs> which is uh, not great. The absolute amount of wombo combo he was able to do turn one, he should not be in turn four right now. This duel should have already been over. So it just gives you the, the impression that making this thing just simply wasn't worth all the time and effort he went into. Number nine, Imperium Magnum, the Superconductive Battle Bot. In Konami's quest to ever make monster titles as long as their effect text, here we have Big Number Fusion. With a printed 4K attack and defense, 
that is certainly a solid beat stick. It's amazing how much something can say and do so little. This level 10 fusion monster is made of Falkyron, the Magna Warrior, and Berserkion, the Electro Magna Warrior. Nice. nice. Must be fusion summoned with the above fusion materials and cannot be special summoned any other way. Sweet. It's a fusion monster with two very specific fusion materials that are both a bit of a pain in the butt to get on board even in their respective decks. And frankly, summoning both of its fusion material would probably arguably be better because then you just have two big beaters that are almost as strong as this thing instead of just one big beater and you didn't have to blow a fusion spell to make it. Granted, it doesn't say those monsters need to be on the field, so you can just go neg two from your hand in order to make this thing. But, but with how much you need to build the deck around to make this card, it's just really that wonderful, not worth it. Once per turn, if your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect, you can negate that activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Sweet, it's got a spell speed two negation ability. At least it has that over number 10. And if this thing is to leave the field, by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon its two fusion materials from your hand or deck, ignoring their summoning conditions. Cute. When this thing's best function is probably just to turbo out its two materials, that really does tell you that this is kind of a clumsy thing to do. So let's make it. All right, CJ, let's see what you can you can do for us. We we making some we making some electromagnet warriors. He decided to go with the emancipators, which I think is cute because. They all rocks, and uh, he's kind of using the the needle fiber link cross O line combo here just to kind of get some resources on board. Dig for us, them rock rocky boys. Oh yeah, I gotta summon the Doki Doki Literature Club over here. I got the what, the block dragon. Oh no, he's actually starting to play Magnet Warriors. Congratulations. I, what I do like about this replay, though, is he doesn't just make the stupid fusion and end his turn. He actually makes a pretty solid board to boot. <laughs> like, this is kind of a thing, and his his opponent's got some serious uh, serious board removal here. It's a little, it's kind of a shame that he uh, ultimately gets the thing kaiju However, he did win. That was fun. Number eight might be my favorite card on the list. It's a damn shame that it doesn't do anything. Phantasmal Lord, Ultimate Bishvalkin. This levelless dark dragon with a name that is mostly not actual words has the following effect. This card's always treated as level 12. So why don't you just print 12 stars on the card? Wait, so, you, so you, just, is that so you can't modulate its level? Why would you ever? Cannot be synchro summoned. Congratulations, you're a synchro monster that cannot be synchro summoned. Nah. Must be special summoned from your extra deck by sending two level eight monsters from your field to the graveyard, one tuner and one non-tuner. So it's like a synchro summon, except we don't have level 16 monsters in this game, so it's instead this weird fake mechanic. So what does this level 16 monster do? Cannot be destroyed by card effects. The bare minimum of self-protection. Congratulations. This card gains a thousand attack for every other monster on the field. Once per turn, during either player's turn as a quick effect, you can special summon a bunch of these zero zero tokens on the field in defense position on both players' fields, as many as you can do. And if you do that, this thing can't attack. Okay, cool, summons a bunch of dumb tokens so that this thing can get freaking huge. And you know, I'm a huge fan of your mother. Maxing out at what? 12,000 attack power? Probably sitting at 10. That is big number. Like, holy crap. That is extremely difficult to make because level eight tuners aren't exactly the most numerous and easy to summon things there are in this game. He does really exemplify the list because getting a level eight tuner and a level eight non-tuner on board is already a weird thing to request a deck to do because tuners tend to be much smaller in level. Once they get to level eight, what the hell are you making with them? All for a thing that just fills the field with a bunch of trolley tokens. That's why I think this card is funny, but it's not very good. All right, to the replay. All right, Raviol, let's see you make Bishbalkin for us using the Rose Dragons. That's an interesting choice. Oh, look, it's another needle fiber combo. <laughs> it's almost like that card's kind of problematic and lets you do ridiculous things. Although I do, I will say this. This is how he ends up getting on board using Gizmek, which I thought was cute, and Geomathmic Magma, Magma, which is a big tuner synchro monster. So that was a that was a clever way of accomplishing that otherwise clumsy synchro or clumsy tuner non tuner level eight requirement. And uh, Shadal's over here is having to deal with huge number. <laughs> so that's certainly a thing. 
Now, I don't know why he didn't summon another token to make this thing flub and fail to summon Winda. I, I, I'm not going back to read if there's something preventing him from doing that, but that is an interesting interaction that you could potentially use his summon a bunch of tokens thing to, like, screw up a Call of Haunted type effect, I think. That's kind of cute, I suppose. And this thing is freaking huge, so that's funny. But yeah, uh, I think Fat Man over here just kind of just kind of gave gave up. <laughs> Number seven, Flying Fortress Skyfire. I am an Autobot now. <laughs> Level eight wind machine has the following effect: cannot be normal summoned or set. Can only be special summoned by the effect of Summon Reactor SK. This derpy level five monster. Once per turn, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls. Nice, a one for one destruction. Once during each of your opponent's turns, you can activate one of the following effects. One, when your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you can inflict 800 damage to them and destroy that monster. Or when your opponent sets a spell or trap, you can destroy that set spell or trap and then also inflict the 800 damage. And the level five thing, well, this thing's also really clumsy too. The summon effect that this thing has is you have to have the other two, as well as this thing, obviously, face up on the field. There's no real archetype for reactors, it's a theme at best, so there's no real simple in-theme way of getting all three on the board, except like normal summon each of them turn after turn, and then this thing being level five is just super clumsy. At least it has the common courtesy of letting you summon Skyfire from your hand deck or graveyard. At least you don't need to draw it. Skyfire isn't the worst card in the world, sure it would be nice if he had some self-protection, but at least he's got a halfway decent control effect. It's just that getting these three disparate monsters on board is just super clumsy. You wouldn't build a deck around just making this card. So let's build a deck around just making this card. All right, James V sent us two replays. I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose the replay that he does the absolute ridiculous wombo combo here in the test hand mode, because uh, uh, I figured that's this is the more interesting of the two replays. The other one is it's you know like how you might actually do it in a real game, and it's clearly a pain in the ass. But why would you want to watch that when you can watch him do Dragon Link wombo combo? <laughs> like, could you imagine sitting there? Uh, doing all of this absolute nonsense just so you can slowly but surely get your dumb reactors on board. Like, it, it's such a clumsy thing. Although I will say using Saruja to just cheese them all on board is, is pretty funny. Like, because you kind of have to. Because there's no solid way of summoning them. In the dual duel, I think he ends up like having just like normal summon them all because just, he didn't open the wombo combo. But look at that! Look at all that ridiculous advantage he had to lose just so he could cheese a Saruja loop. That was super cute. Number six, Tamias, the Knight of Deus Ex Machina. Follow me. I know the way. Sorry you didn't get that machina you were talking about, but at least that guy showed up out of nowhere to save us for no reason! This big old fusion monster is made of Legendary Knight Tamias, Legendary Knight Critias, and Legendary Knight, uh, what's the one I'm forgetting? Hermos! That's the third one. Must be special summoned from your extra deck by sending those above three stupid Legendary Knight guys face up in the field to the graveyard. You don't need polymerization. It specifies that, even though it also doesn't say that it's a fusion summon. That's weird, but anyway. Unaffected by other card effects. Oh, at least that's something. Nice. nice. I would say it's big number, but it has no number. Once per battle, before damage calc, you can make this thing's attack and defense become equal to the strongest monster on board. Whichever one has the highest attack, you pick one if you, if you, if you have a tie. It's not till the end of the turn. That's cute. Presumably you're crashing this into something that's just absolutely huge that can get killed by battle, so this thing will equal it out and then crash into it and kill each other. Or I guess you could crash into something small but emulate something big just to do some damage. But you might want to crash because when this thing is destroyed by battle, you can special summon those three legendary knight guys from your graveyard back to your field. Now that doesn't sound so bad, but until you consider that the three legendary knights are all like level eights and can only be special summoned by the effect of a legendary heart, this dumb unsearchable normal spell card, that requires the three legendary dragon spell cards in your graveyard in order to then summon the three legendary knights so that you can then get rid of those three legendary knights to make this thing. The hoops we must go through to make something that ultimately just crashes into something else. Imagine just 
Having Honest. Hell, this thing's even a light monster. <laughs> what makes this card even less worth making it is that arguably the three monsters that you make this thing with are arguably, they're just better on their own because they all have like 2800 attack and they pop spells and traps when they're summoned. Like they, they, they just do more. And they have like weird battle effects where they get stuff out of your graveyard depending on which one you're, like they're just better off because you have three monsters instead of one stupid one. You almost can say that this card is relegated to, it just sits in your extra deck just in case you need it to get out of some weird scenario where that's your only option, but normally you would just win by playing the three other guys, I suppose. Either way, you're building an entire deck around this thing, like this one. All right, Calamity gives us the Eye of the Tamias, and here he's playing uh, like Flight Swarm Performages. I think that's actually kind of a, of a cute idea because that uh, that's a good way of trying to get all the spells in your graveyard, I guess. He's just trying to mill through his deck and just do what he can in order to just set up that ridiculous game state you need. Uh, this one's a real duel. I did tell my subscribers that they can just use the test hand function of EDO Pro if it's just an absolute ridiculous, like, wombo combo you need in order to actually uh, get the card on board. But uh, Zawado is fun. <laughs> However, I think it's it's just cool. I was like, I was like, you guys get bonus points if it's a real duel that way you know you can actually see just how much of a pain in the butt it actually is and it's not just a crazy wombo combo but for some of these i let it slide because i was like you know what the, the choke points are real you'd never make this but i do like this duel just because i think i think uh calamity's choice of the light sworn engine is just kind of cute and he's got like his entire deck in his graveyard at this point time to Time to make what's his face, which I thought was cute. This is probably a, a solid way of actually uh, searching this dumb spell. And look, he made it. We did it, everybody. And we're playing against Arcana, so that's our yeah, uh, that's interesting, I suppose. Arcana, like, cause Arcana sounds like the dude. More Saruja. It's almost like that card's actually a little bit problematic himself. But yeah, we, we, we certainly made Eye of Tamias. We spent 40 cards out of our deck to end on a Tamias <laughs> with our opponent barely doing anything because he had, he's playing a weird fairy deck with, with no with no extra deck. That's it's, uh, pretty, pretty solid. And here we kind of show that, like, you know, ultimately just summoning these three things are better than playing the monster because you just get a bunch of pops and, like, all this attack power. All right, so Future Dave is editing this, and he realized that it's just going to be way too long of a video, so I'm going to have to split this up into two parts. So if you don't want to miss that second part, the bottom five, you better subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss the next video. We'll be uploading next Friday. And while you wait, go check out Enemy Controller. There should be a video posting there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And remember, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Oh, hey losers, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.